Okay, hello and good evening, everybody. Welcome to our live stream. Apologies for starting a moment or two late. Uh, my name is Michael Reed, and I'm the Public Outreach Coordinator for the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Toronto in Canada. And we are very, very pleased that you are joining us today for uh, what we hope will become a series of trivia nights uh, to help keep people interested, engaged, entertained during these difficult times and maybe beyond. So if you're like me and you're located in Ontario, we're currently in a uh, uh, an increasingly strong lockdown. So lots of people are going to be at home looking for things to do. And we thought maybe we could share some of our interest and enthusiasm for space with you by running some uh, lighthearted trivia nights, which is what we're going to do tonight. So I hope you will uh, interact freely tonight, uh, interact in the chat on YouTube. I'm just going to make sure that I can kind of follow along with us on YouTube. Um, but while we do this, while we, we get going, I want you to be aware of what tonight's prizes are. So our prizes tonight are going to be uh, what you are hopefully seeing on the screen right now. So we have three great prizes. We have our top prize for our first place winner will be our Chime Lego set. So Chime, if you don't know about it, is a Canadian telescope, big Canadian success. It's the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment. So it's a radio telescope located in British Columbia. And uh, we've commissioned a, a custom limited edition Lego set that uh, you can win tonight if you're our first place winner. For our second place winner, we're going to be giving away this lovely moon globe. We give this away at lots of our events at the Dunlop Institute, and people usually love these things. They're kind of neat. You can uh, light them up and change the colors and pose for cool Instagram photos with them. Lots of fun. And then our third prize tonight is going to be this heat-changing uh, mug that shows you the constellations and the images appear when there's a hot liquid in it and they go away when there's not. So those are our prizes for today. Uh, we are joined in the background by Kara Manovich, who is our events manager for the Dunlap Institute, and she's going to be moderating the chat on YouTube, and uh, hopefully at the end, if there's a little bit of time, we'll have a chance for some questions. Uh, and Kara will be passing any of your urgent comments to me uh, should they arise during the event. So a little bit about the rules just before we jump right into the trivia. So the rules are that anyone is welcome to play. Uh, so wherever you're joining us from around the world, you're more than welcome to play. Uh, however, for the prizes, we can only send those to Canadian addresses and only addresses outside Quebec, because if you're familiar with the Canadian landscape, you know Quebec has different rules for contests. So we can only send prizes uh, outside Quebec. So. Also, if you're under 18, please make sure that you have your parents' permission to play uh, and we may need to contact them to send you a prize. Now, in our chat, please remember to keep the chat respectful and family friendly uh, as there may be children playing along with us. And then the most important thing before we actually get into our trivia is about how to register. So we're gonna be playing trivia using a system called Kahoot tonight. And uh, in order for you to join in, it's gonna ask you for an email address. Now, we're not gonna collect your email address for any purpose other than to send you a prize. So if you would like to be able to receive a prize for your participation tonight, do please use a valid email address. Uh, we will not use it for any other purposes. You're not gonna be added to our mailing list or anything like that, but we do need a valid way to get in contact with you in case you win. If you don't care and you just wanna play for fun, you can you know put in whatever you like. Uh, and I think uh, without further ado, then, we can get into our game. So though I'll, I'll just give you a sense of how this will go. We have 20 questions for you on a very popular theme these days, which is, as you can maybe guess uh, from the background behind me, our theme tonight is Mars. So we're going to do Mars-related trivia. And the key thing to remember here is Mars-related. You'll see what I mean as we go along. Now, we'll have 20 questions, and once we start, keep in mind how the scoring system works. You have a time limit for each question, which you'll see along with the questions, and the clock will count down. Depending on the question type, you'll have sort of 30 seconds to a minute to submit your answer, and then that's that. 
Now, the faster you answer, the more points you will get. So you've got to be a little bit uh, strategic about answering quickly versus answering, you know, with full thought and accuracy, right? You want to get your answer in reasonably quickly. Uh, so I will give you a moment to sign up for uh, Kahoot or just sign in to Kahoot. So here we go. Let me just... Uh, Transfer us over to Kahoot, one moment. Okay, so you should be seeing uh, our Kahoot window momentarily, and you'll see at the top of the screen there is a URL that's Kahoot, K A H O O T dot I T, so Kahoot it. So go to Kahoot it and then enter in the pin number on the screen right now, which is 685-6438. 685-6438. Remember, use an email address that you're comfortable being contacted at uh, to receive a prize uh, should you want one. I'll give you a couple of minutes here just to uh, sign in and get all ready to go, and then we will start our trivia. So I see lots of people joining in. That's wonderful. Welcome, everybody. Uh, as we go, I will try and answer some of your questions about Mars. So in addition to doing public outreach work at the Dunlap Institute, I'm also a professor of astronomy at the University of Toronto. Uh, one of the courses that I've been teaching this semester is about astrobiology and the search for life elsewhere in the universe, including on Mars. So hopefully I can uh, answer some of your questions. Uh, and I'll address those via the chat on YouTube if you want to post any questions you have there. There. Mostly we'll leave those to the end. Okay, so we've got lots of people signing up. That's wonderful. We'll give you another minute or so just to sign up and then we will get started. Wonderful to see so many, so many space enthusiasts joining us on a Tuesday night, or Tuesday night for those of us in Ontario. Okay, so we'll give everyone just a minute. So remember, just before we get started again, each question has a timer associated with it. The faster you answer, the more points you get, and the more likely you are to win. Your score will accumulate as we go along, and there will be a total of 20 questions. You'll be able to see as we go uh, how you're doing compared to other people. Okay, just a little bit more time. Last few people joining the stream to sign in. So remember our, our prizes tonight, I'll review those again in a moment, but we have a Chime Lego set, we have a Moon Globe and a Constellation Mug. Uh, Celeste is asking, what time does the event finish at? It'll probably be something like a half an hour or so. Uh, can we put the pin in the chat? Perhaps Kara uh, could drop the pin into the chat there. Oh, it's actually a few, a few chats up from the person who was asking. Okay, so let's get started with our trivia. Lots of eager people waiting. So we're going to get going. Alrighty. So here we go. Okay, again, really quickly the rules. Anyone can play. We can only send prizes to Canadian addresses outside Quebec. If you're under 18, do please ask a parent that you have permission to uh, play and get a prize. Keep the chat respectful and family friendly. And if you want a prize, sign in with your, your true email. Our prizes, limited edition Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment Telescope Lego Moon Globe and Heat Changing Mug. All right, so here we go. Our first question, which of these planets is the smallest? And I'll give you the hint that this image is not to scale. So choose whichever one you believe is the smallest of these planets. So 
So if you're just joining us on the stream, you can go to kahoot.it and the pin is at the bottom of the Kahoot window there. It's 6856438. All right, so that's the end of our first question. And it looks like 101 of you got that one right. The smallest of those planets is not Mars, but Mercury. Mercury is the smallest planet in our solar system. All right, so let's see. Currently in the lead is Soaring Eagle. Congratulations, Soaring Eagle. Which of these countries did not successfully send a spacecraft to Mars in 2021? Which one did not successfully send a spacecraft to Mars in 2021? A little bit more time left for this one. Okay, let's see. How, okay, some disagreement on this one, a little bit of dispute. So the majority of you appear to have said the United Arab Emirates, which is incorrect. The UAE actually did send a spacecraft to Mars this year in collaboration with a couple of American universities. So the UAE's HOPE Mars mission is now at Mars and it uh, entered orbit in February and it's going to be studying Mars and Mars's climate and atmosphere for the potential to host life there and maybe some signs of uh, life in the past. So India uh, didn't send a spacecraft to Mars this year, but they did successfully send an orbiter to Mars in 2014. And in fact, India was the first country to send a spacecraft to Mars and enter orbit correctly on their first try. So kudos to India. But all of these countries have sent spacecraft to Mars uh, at some point. Okay, so in the lead now we have Honest Goat. Wonderful, Honest Goat. Okay, next one. True or false? Mars can be seen from Earth with the unaided eye. True or false? Can you see Mars from Earth with the unaided eye? Meaning without a telescope, without binoculars, no special equipment, just your eye. Okay, a little bit more time for this one. All right, so 129 of you say true, which is the correct answer. You definitely can see Mars from Earth with the unaided eye. So let's see, here's our soaring eagle in the lead. Now, if you happen to be uh, in some place where you can see the constellation Orion, so for example, people across Canada this evening will be able to see the constellation Orion, uh, anyone in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, then you can go out and see Mars tonight with your unaided eye. So in this image here, uh, hopefully you can make it out on YouTube, but uh, the constellation of Orion is on the left side of the image. You can maybe make out the bright star Betelgeuse and uh, the other one in uh, Orion's ankle, which is Rigel. And then just a little ways over, a little ways to the right, towards the west, uh, is Mars in the middle of this image. So if you go out and you want to see Mars, it's a fair bit brighter than most of the stars, and it has a, a slight red tint to it. Not, not really red, but kind of more orangey tint to it. Uh, and it's noticeably different in color than the rest of the things in the sky. It'll be sort of similar in color to the star Betelgeuse, if you're used to finding Betelgeuse, which is quite close by. So you can definitely go out tonight, have a look at Mars. Uh, it's often there in, in the nighttime sky, easily seen, no special equipment needed. Um, the one little trick, if you're having trouble deciding if you've actually found Mars or if you're just looking at a star, is that when you look at a planet, planets typically don't twinkle. They look sort of steady in brightness, whereas stars tend to fluctuate a little bit in brightness uh, as their light passes through our atmosphere. So you can definitely see Mars in the night sky. Common thing for people to see. Lovely thing to go out and try and see tonight. Okay, next one. This one you have to type your answer in. What's the title of the 2015 Mars survival adventure film starring Matt Damon? And if you're not sure, a photo from that film is being revealed slowly to give you a hint. So you can type your answer in. 
Alex, I see you saying it's cloudy tonight. No problem. You can go out and see Mars tomorrow, next month. It'll still be up. So let's see what you said. Okay, so we got, oh, we got a whole bunch of different things. Matt Damon goes to Mars. I like that. The correct answer is The Martian, which it looks like lots of you got. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, hopefully you've, if you haven't seen that movie, you should definitely check it out. It's a wonderful, wonderful movie about what it might be like to try and send humans to Mars and have them survive in difficult conditions there. All right, so in the lead now, we have Tropical Horse with 3,839 points. Congratulations, Tropical Horse. Which of these planets has the longest day? Meaning the longest time from sunrise to sunrise. A little bit more time for this one. Okay, so the correct answer here is Venus. Venus has the longest day. A day on Venus is 243 Earth days. Really, really long. Uh, whereas on all of these other planets, it's, you know, an Earth day or just a bit shorter, tiny bit longer on Mars. The surprising thing about Mars is that it has almost exactly the same length of day as Earth does, which is just a coincidence. Uh, other planets have wildly different days. So Earth and Venus, or Earth and Mars rather, having similar length days means that if we were to go to Mars, send people to Mars, then the length of the day would feel kind of familiar to us. Uh, and it wouldn't be such a huge adjustment uh, as it would to go to, say, Venus with the not only a very inhospitable atmosphere, but also the very long days. Okay. So in the lead now we have, oh, still Tropical Horse. Okay, let's see if anyone can get a, get a leg up there on Tropical Horse. So here we go. In this campy 1996 film, Martians melt the Eiffel Tower. Which movie are we talking about? It's very silly. The Eiffel Tower melts. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. few more seconds and it is as many of you figured out Mars Attacks a wonderful completely ridiculous movie about uh, ridiculous aliens invading Earth great disaster film okay so in the lead now we have Genius Koala ah, wonderful someone has uh, taken the lead all right so scientists have strong evidence that in the distant past Mars used to have which of the following Which of these did Mars used to have? And the answer, oh, wonderful. Most of you got this, oceans, that's right. So there's lots of evidence that uh, billions of years ago, Mars had some amount of oceans, right? It had a water, liquid water, covering a large fraction of the surface. And there's plenty of evidence to this from kind of the chemical composition of the soil to uh, the, the channels that we see carved all over the surface of Mars, some of which were clearly carved by freely flowing liquid water. So although Mars doesn't appear to have much, maybe any liquid water on its surface today, it definitely did in the past. Okay, so our scoreboard now, Prairie Elk has taken the lead. Next question. In ancient Roman mythology, Mars was the god of what? And just to mislead you, I'm showing a completely different god in the picture here. So don't be misled by the image. What was Mars the god of in Roman mythology?
Okay, most of you again got this one. The God of War. Wonderful. Our new leader is... Oh, still Prairie Elk. Congratulations, Prairie Elk. So here's another one for you to type. One of the earliest hits by this popular musician was titled Moonshine. And this is not a picture of the artist. But if you need a hint, remember what we're here to talk about tonight. Okay, let's see what she said. Whole bunch of things. Coldplay, Astronomy, Rihanna. Correct answer. Wow, 45 of you. Wonderful. Bruno Mars, right? Here's the Mars theme, right? Not Mars content necessarily, but Mars related. So the artist in question was Bruno Mars. And our new leader is Noble Raven. True or false, the tallest mountain on Mars is more than twice as tall as the tallest mountain on Earth. And another photo to help you out, maybe. Alrighty, so 116 of you say true, which is correct. The mountain in question is the one you were seeing in that image. It's called Olympus Mons, named after the home of the Greek gods. And it is more than twice as tall as the next tallest mountain on Earth. Now, recently it's been disputed as to whether or not it is the tallest mountain of any kind in the solar system because there is a mountain on uh, an asteroid called Vesta which looks like it's almost exactly the same height about 22 kilometers tall so this mountain on Mars is an extinct volcano and it is truly colossal it's so big that the base of that volcano would cover kind of the equivalent area to the state of Arizona and if you could walk up that volcano, you would walk almost, you know, out of the atmosphere of Mars. You would walk, you know, until the atmosphere was so thin you could barely tell it was there. So imagine just being able to walk up a mountain and directly into what would feel like space. Fascinating, right? Okay, our new leader, oh, still Noble Raven, Noble Raven. True or false, the first SpaceX rocket to reach the Martin's Martian surface landed in late 2019. So SpaceX, of course, the very famous uh, nowadays space launch company that is having great success with their rockets. The first one to reach the Martian surface landed in late 2019. True or false? Okay, 91 of you over oh, a little bit of disagreement on this. So in fact, no SpaceX rocket has ever landed on Mars. Uh, SpaceX has sent, um, has launched things in the direction of Mars, but they have definitely not landed a rocket on Mars. Although that is something that they are intending to do uh, in the hopefully not terribly distant future. At least if you're, you know, hopeful about uh, landing more stuff on Mars, then that, that is likely to happen um, sometime Maybe in the next 10 years, we'll see. Okay, our new leader, Clever Giraffe. Congratulations, Clever Giraffe. So this one, which science fiction author was the Perseverance rover landing site named after? Which science fiction author? The Perseverance rover. So the questions are getting harder and harder as we go along. So Perseverance is this lander that has recently landed on Mars. The landing site was named after a science fiction author. Who was it?
Okay, wow. Okay, 65 of you got that. I'm super impressed. So the Perseverance rover landing site was in fact named after uh, the writer uh, Octavia E. Butler, who was the person furthest to the left on that uh, previous image. All three of these, or all four of these, are wonderful, wonderful writers. I encourage you to read all of their works. Uh, Octavia Butler is known for uh, thinking about, you know, how humans might move out into space and uh, what our future in space might be like, how it might be different from our past on Earth. Wonderful, wonderful author. Alrighty, so our new leader is Prairie Elk again. Prairie Elk, welcome back to the top. Okay, so our next one. What type of vehicle did the Perseverance rover bring with it to Mars? So Perseverance had a hitchhiker. What was it? The photo, if you're interested, is a one of the very first, or maybe the first, uh, human uh, or, or airplane flights ever, ever uh, that happened. Okay, so the correct answer is indeed a helicopter, which quite a few of you got. So that helicopter. Uh, oh, we'll just we'll look at our leaderboard. So still Prairie Elk in the lead. Congratulations. Here is that helicopter actually on Mars. This is a photo from Mars taken yesterday by the Perseverance rover, which landed about a month ago. So uh, this this uh, helicopter is called Ingenuity, and it's the first helicopter that's ever or ever will have been flown on Mars once it flies, which will be soon. Uh, and part of the, the idea here is just to test the technology, to try and decide, you know, can we make flying craft that are efficient and effective uh, at traveling around Mars and maybe be able to see things we've never be able to, been able to see before, go farther than we've been able to go before and explore more of the planet robotically. So I think this photo is hugely inspiring, right? It's a photo taken by a robot on Mars of another robot on Mars and that little helicopter is just waiting to waiting to get going, take off and fly around on Mars. Okay, getting harder now. How many moons does Mars have? How many moons? A little bit more time for this one. Okay, and a hundred of you got the correct answer, which is two. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, and they are both kind of small. You saw one of them in the photo just there. They're both kind of small, uh, lumpy, kind of uh, little rocks. This is one of them. Um, they're not, you know, big round things like Earth's moon. They're just little tiny, uh, probably kind of captured asteroid types of things. Uh, and some people think that maybe we will land on them, land humans on them, maybe even before we land on the surface of Mars, because it's so easy to land on uh, a small object in low gravity than on a bigger object with more gravity. And they're very interesting to look at. Beautiful colors and streaks and things. Okay, next question. Or first, our leaderboard. Oh, Prairie Elk still in the lead, starting to develop a commanding lead. Some people are going to have to take some risks if they want to get out ahead of pra Prairie Elk here, answer some questions really quickly. So the next one is a true or false. In 1983, a Martian meteorite weighing 185 kilograms fell to Earth and was recovered in Wisconsin. True or false? Oh, you're answering so quickly, trying to beat Prairie Elk. few more seconds. Okay, so only 44 of you got it this time. This is incorrect. 
So although pieces of Mars are constantly raining down on Earth, you know, things will sort of impact Mars, asteroids and things will impact Mars, they will uh, you know, tear pieces away from it, they will get scattered into space, and some of those will make their way through the solar system and eventually land on Earth. And there have been a few quite large chunks. I think the the largest definitive Mars meteorite is something like uh, about, f I think maybe, I think it might be 30 kilograms? I forget the exact number. Way less than 185 kilograms. So we've never had a chunk of Mars quite that big uh, land on Earth, but definitely some substantial chunks of Mars, uh, which are, of course, analyzed for all the possibilities of, you know, could there be fossils in them or records of Mars life? Uh, nothing definitive like that just yet, though. All right, so, oh, somebody has dethroned Prairie Elk. Focused Swan has taken the lead. Congratulations. So true or false, the temperature on Mars can reach 30 degrees Celsius in the summer. We're getting down to our last few questions now. few more seconds. Okay, and 87 of you got the answer, which is true, perhaps surprisingly, uh, in the daytime in summer on Mars, it can actually be kind of hot. Uh, we think of Mars as quite a cold planet, and that's true. On average, it is a bit colder than Earth, you know, maybe a lot colder, depending on your, your threshold for cold, um, but it can actually get fairly warm. You know, when the sun is shining, uh, especially maybe where the air is a little bit thicker uh, on Mars, you can actually get reasonably warm temperatures. Warm enough that some people wonder whether this might mean that liquid water could flow freely, at least for short periods of time on the surface of Mars. All right, so our new champion, oh, still focused swan, okay. Mars's atmosphere, what gas is it mostly made of? The atmosphere of Mars. Okay, a few more seconds. And 69 of you got it correct, that it is carbon dioxide. So on Earth, carbon dioxide is something we're quite, you know, concerned often about having too much of in our atmosphere because it is a reasonably powerful greenhouse gas. And we have, you know, much less than 1% carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, and that's enough to significantly warm our planet. On Mars, something like 95% of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide but the atmosphere is very, very thin. So even though it's almost pure carbon dioxide, there's so little atmosphere overall that it doesn't produce, you know, catastrophic warming the way it does on, say, Venus, which also has an atmosphere that is about 95% carbon dioxide, but much, much thicker. So on Mars, the little bit of atmosphere that it has is mainly greenhouse gases, and that helps keep it a bit warmer than it would be without it. All right, we're getting down to our last few questions. So our new, oh, clever giraffe back on top. Here we go. In what year was the first soft landing made on Mars? Soft landing means not a crash. The first time something successfully touched down without crashing. Okay, 51 of you got the correct answer, which is 1971. So in 1971, the Soviet, remember back then it was the Soviet Union, 
Uh, the Soviet Union landed their Mars 3 craft on Mars, and it didn't last very long, only like, you know, a minute or so. Um, it was intended to land and then deploy this little rover. Uh, this rover, which is, you know, a very different kind of technology than our modern rovers, was on skis. Uh, I don't think it had a, a proper, you know, guidance camera. It just had a little bar on the front to detect if any, if it was bumping into anything, never got deployed, unfortunately, uh, because the lander landed successfully and then failed. Um, so that's probably, if you haven't heard about it, why you haven't heard more about it. Okay, and just before our final question, Clever Giraffe is still in the lead. Okay, here we go. Our final one, rank these spacecraft in the order in which they were launched to Mars with the earliest on the left earliest on the left. So you've got to move these around, grab them and drag them in your browser or on your phone, uh, order them so that the earliest is on the left, the latest, most recent is on the right. And this is our final question. So you have a little bit more time for this one because uh, it takes a minute to move them around. A few more seconds and... Okay, so the correct order is Mars 5, which is a Soviet craft, Viking 1, which is an American craft, Mars Express, which is a European, you know, pan-European spacecraft, and Tianwen 1, which just reached Mars uh, this year, about a month ago, and that's a Chinese craft. So a whole plethora of different countries have successfully sent things to Mars. This is the order in which those particular craft landed. And then I think uh, we have uh one more sorry i think i said the we have just one left i think i may have misled you a moment ago so clever giraffe is still in the lead but only by a tiny tiny margin okay this is the final one sorry how many missions have humans sent to orbit or land on mars how many things have we sent to orbit or land on mars one last chance to unseat our leader This one's tricky. I might not have got this. Okay, 47 of you, wonderful, got the correct answer, which is 49. So that's a lot, right? A lot of human spacecraft that have been sent to orbit or land on Mars. Not all of them were successful, but there were 49 attempts made. Uh, there have been more things actually sent kind of past Mars, uh, you know, at, on flybys maybe to do gravity assists around Mars or just have a look as they went by on their way somewhere else, but 49 that were actually destined for Mars itself. All right, so let's see. In the end, our grand prize winners. So in third place, we have Clever Giraffe. In second place, Dr. Snail. And in first place, we have Lucky Raven. So congratulations to all of our winners. So assuming all of those folks uh, put in their correct email addresses, we will be in contact with you by email in the next uh, few days to let you know about your prize. Lucky Raven has won the Chime uh, Custom Lego set. And I've, I would need to go back to our podium. Uh, so Lucky Raven won the Chime Lego set. And Clever Giraffe won our Constellation mug. And Dr. Snail won our Moon Globe. Okay, so that's it for our trivia tonight. We're done in about uh, a little bit over half an hour. Uh, I hope that was fun for you. If uh, 
you have any feedback for us, if you enjoyed that, didn't enjoy it, please do chat it to us on YouTube there. Uh, you can also contact the Dunlap Institute on our social media. Uh, there's the event on Facebook that you may have seen, or you can contact us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever is your favorite mode of contact. And you can also reach us by email at outreach, O-U-T-R-E-A-C-H, at universe dot utoronto.ca uh, if you have any feedback if you'd like to see more of these trivia nights do let us know maybe suggest a topic that you'd like us to quiz you about and we will share information about upcoming events on our social media now just in our last few minutes if there are any one or two you know space questions people would like to ask on youtube maybe i can try and answer a couple of questions before we sign off Oh, Terry in Kelowna. Hi, Terry. Uh, near Chime. Wonderful. Terry, was that you who won the Chime Lego set? That would be a wonderful coincidence if you won it and lived near, to, near it. Okay, I don't see any questions coming in in the chat, so I think we're going to wrap up for tonight. Again, thanks so much, everybody. We will see you again at our next...